Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the fifth lecture of the course on sociological perspectives on modernity. In the last lecture, we have discussed Marx's views on modernity through the lenses of holism or totality. Okay? And a little more discussion will now take place. Uh, on holism or totality, as we have already discussed that in any given society, Marx argues a particular combination of, of, of the forces of production and relations of production, I mean, I mean combination of forces of production and relations of production results in uh, modes of production. Okay? And these modes of production will dominate all others. It, thus, in, in the society that, that Marx saw emerging, an industrial technology dependent on large scale investment was driving out artisanal production. Okay? More generally, relations of production based on small scale production for one's own use of relations of serfdom, relations of slavery, uh, of an aristocratic lifestyle based on conspicuous expenditure. Uh, were being replaced by by a polarization. I mean, what is that polarization? That that the those who had no access to the means of production and who therefore uh, had to sell their labor power to those who controlled the means of production through uh, uh, or via ownership and control. Then there is the the the. Uh, the the, the the ownership and control, the uh, uh, the ownership of and control over the means of production. I mean, it has made a class of bourgeois and those who do not have access to such ownership and control over the means of production, they are called proletariat. Bourgeois means uh, the rich uh, or the owning classes. Uh, the, the you may say uh, in, in capitalism they are called uh, the capitalist classes uh, and those who do not have any access to uh, such means of production um, uh, or they do not own or control any means of production they are called the exploited classes or the proletariat uh, or the have nots okay if 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 those who have those who have access to means of production are called haves then uh, the then on the other hand uh, those who do not have any access to means of production are called have nots okay thus social relations in capitalist society are reshaped by this emerging situation which replaces the domination and exploitation of feudal peasants by the aristocracy with a new kind of exploitation and a new kind of domination. Okay? These for Marx are the primary relations within capitalist society. In capitalist as in other societies, the state, the arts, philosophy and so on are determined by this primary reality. Marx formulates this as the determination of social consciousness uh, by social being. At one level, what this implies is clear enough. I mean, consciousness is also a social product. Intellectual and political consciousness is also a social creation, social product. And the practical form of consciousness is its social embodiment in language. At another level, however, the determination of social consciousness 
by social being is translated into an unfortunate metaphor which opposes different forms of social activity. What does it imply? I mean, what is that? What, what are those? I mean, different forms of society. I mean, I mean, an economic base and an ideological superstructure. Okay, this is this is a little perplexing. Okay, because clearly economic activities involve consciousness just as much as political and cultural activities also form economic realities. Okay. Okay. Then what distinguishes capitalism uh, 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 from uh, or, or what or the way we can we can look at uh, uh, various stages of society? Okay. Mm, um, uh, the society, the way Marx envisaged, uh, has traversed through different stages, namely hunting and gathering economy, slavery, feudalism, capitalism, which will uh, move on to uh, socialism and thereafter communism. Of these, of these various stages of society, slavery, feudalism, and capitalism are class societies. Whereas, hunting and gathering economy and as well as socialism and communism are not class societies, they are classless societies for Marx. Okay. Uh, the really, I mean, I mean, then who are the, uh, uh, the haves and have nots of each class, I mean, I mean, each mode of production in slavery, their haves were represented by the slave lords and have nots by slaves. In feudalism, haves were represented by uh, the feudal lords and the have nots were represented by serfs. And in capitalism, haves are represented by the capitalists, whereas uh, have nots are represented by the working classes. Okay. And the relationship between the haves and have nots is not the relation of domination or subordination, but of exploitation. This is very important. Okay. Okay. The best way, the, the, the best way to make sense of this uh, is by uh, replacing it in the intellectual context of Marx's own time. I mean, philosophies of history, I mean, I mean, um, uh, uh, philosophers of history, I mean, if you if you look at Hegel, okay, Hegel uh, argued that human history was a working out of ideas with a capital one. I mean, ideas which are uh, largely of a philosophical or theological nature. In other words, explanations of historical development in terms, for example, of the development of the idea of God or of changing forms of government or what Marx is arguing against, a purely top-down history as we would say today, which treats the self-understanding of a literary, philosophical or political elite uh, as, as the real history. As against this, Marx, I think, is arguing that we need, need to look at what is actually going on uh, in the everyday lives of the majority of the population. Okay? And, and we, and and we not only must look at what is actually going on, but we also must be able to explain the changes in which uh, the uh, elites think about uh, themselves in these terms. Put it, pu pu putting it succinctly, okay, the primacy of social being okay, is by now a more or less taken for granted assumption of virtually all serious history and sociology, we no longer think that the age of the novel, for example, is an adequate description of 18th century England. For example, in what is history, E. H. Carr, C. A. Double R, E. H. Carr, Edward Hallett Carr, uh, wrote that uh, whenever we try to sketch history, why the history always uh, indicates the history of kings, emperors, religions, gods, goddesses. 
history has always remained silent about uh, the slum dwellers, the pedestrians, pedestrians, the poor, the marginalized. History also is biased in that way. Okay. I mean, I mean, what this fairly straightforward opposition, okay, lacks is a is a term for the social and the cultural in a broader sense. What is that? I mean, social interaction um, other than the immediately economic cultural activity, other than the production of high culture. It is in this area that the serious arguments are lo located, must be situated, okay? but it is an area which could not be opened up until the arguments that history could be seen purely in terms of kings, philosophers and novelists had been got out of the way. That is why I said history is biased, opinionated. History has been, uh, I mean the way history has been sketched over a period of time has always glorified kings, emperors uh, and so on, the powers that be. Those who did not have power, those who did not have any access to uh, means of production, those who did not own or control means of production, okay, they are always left out from the pages of history. Okay. Then when they are left out, when, when the have nots, when the proletariat, when the working classes are left out from the pages of history, okay, such situation calls for social and political movements. Now, now let us see uh, 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 how Marx's works have contributed to the debates on modernity through another central political and philosophical uh, foundation of modernity, namely social movements. I mean one of the key problems in this area relates in fact uh, uh, to the opposition that, that uh, Marx identifies uh, between those uh, who depend on selling their labor power that is the working classes, working classes and those who owns the means of production. I mean they are capitalists. For Marx, because the history of the human species is the history of its social labor, I mean the development of new modes of production is itself a human history, more than that it is the history of a class. That is why in the, in the first, in, 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 the, in the manifesto of the communist party of 1848, uh, Marx wrote the history of all hitherto existing society is the history of class struggles. Okay. I mean, I mean the, the development of the capitalist mode of production not only generates uh, a new class capitalists, it is at the same time a result of their creative activity. Okay. Whenever we, we are left out, whenever uh, the have nots, the proletariat are left out from the pages of history when they are exploited uh, uh, to the greatest ex uh, possible extent. Uh, they also try to forge a class for itself through intellectual and political consciousness and so on. Okay. Okay. I mean the, de I mean the, 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 when, when when it is the history of a class, okay? I mean as I have already mentioned earlier, for Marx, uh, classes are manifestations of economic differentiation. Classes are uh, constituted not on the basis of uh, the, uh, not on the basis of income that one earns, but on the basis of the position that one occupies uh, in the process of production or the function that functions that one performs in the process of production. Okay. That is why I gave you this example. For example, there are two blacksmiths, one the owner and the other a paid worker, both belong to two different classes, not one. Okay. I mean that, I mean that if it is the history of a class, okay, the development of the capitalist mode of production not only generates a new class of capitalists, 
it is at the same time a result of their creative activity. And the first section of the manifesto of the communist party is a, uh, I mean it offers a description and very often an admiring one uh, of the human creativity and the immense forces okay, uh, uh, unleashed by this new class. This, this, this new class, okay, uh, I mean drawn from history of that particular class, okay, this new class shapes society in its own image at the same time it is itself shaped by, influenced by the, the, the existing mode of production it is developing. Okay. This is not simply economic. Let me, let me uh, uh, clarify here. Okay. This is not simply economic. Marx treats the 18, uh, I mean treats the, the, the 1688 coup in Britain and the French revolution as a, of, of 1789 as moves towards the state of the new society and, anal and uh, analyzes much of the intellectual culture of his day as a further contribution to this kind of society. Okay? This, is, this is very important. Okay? When, when, when I said uh, uh, that, 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 that uh, it is an, uh, I mean, it, uh, uh, he analyzes uh, much of the intellectual culture of his day as a further contribution to this kind of society. I mean, in capitalist societies, the, the, the working class occupies the same place that the capitalist class occupies uh, in, in feudal society. Okay? For, for Marx, it will eventually overthrow the capitalist class and create a new society, a socialist one in which the means of production will be socially uh, rather than individually owned and which will tend towards um, uh, the establishment of a communist society which will be entirely free of domination and exploitation. Uh, but, but, what, but, what, but very quickly, what is the difference between uh, socialism and communism? Okay. In socialism, each will be contributing uh, according to his or her capacity and will be paid according to his or her work. But in communism, each will be contributing according to his or her capacity and will be paid according to his or her needs. Okay? Okay. Uh, then, uh, then, but how, the, how is this supposed to happen? Okay. Marx makes a conceptual distinction between the economic position occupied by, by the working class and, and, and what he describes as class, it, class in itself and its political and cultural activity, what he describes as class for itself. The, the, um, then, then, then this, I mean, I mean, when I said uh, stages of different modes of production, when I, uh, what I, we have already discussed, I mean, starting from hunting and gathering economy to slave society to feudal society to capitalist society, which will unavoidably and unstoppably uh, move on to socialism and thereafter communism. But how does it happen? There must be a transition from class in itself to class for itself. What does Marx mean by class in itself? What does Marx mean by class for itself? For Marx, I mean, I mean class in itself means unorganized, illiterate, apolitical workforce. Class for itself means organized, political, educated, labor class. Okay. The, the argument is essentially like this. I mean, the situation of exploitation, the, the, the situation of exploitation into which the capitalist mode of production places the working class is not the end of the story. Working class people will become aware of this exploitation, okay? they will organize together and they will oppose it. 
This awareness, organization and opposition is initially local and spontaneous, but it becomes more and more organized, more and more powerful and more and more radical. Okay? This, 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 this transformation, this transition from, from, uh, from organization, uh, awareness, organization and opposition being local and spontaneous to, to such awareness, organization and opposition being more organized, more powerful and more radical assumes greater significance in the context of the transition from class in itself to class for itself. And class for itself then involves a class consciousness intellectual and political consciousness which is ultimately directed towards the transformation of society. Okay? Uh, okay. The, the, the conflict that, that uh, uh, such, such, such transformation entails, okay, that is the class struggle is described by Marx uh, in a famous formulation as the history of all hitherto uh, Mm, existing societies is the history of class struggles. Okay. Then, 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 then social movements, then in the form of class movements are instrumental both in forming the major events within particular forms and in transforming one social form to another. Okay. Okay. I, 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 I repeat. Uh, that, that, that social movements for Marx then in the form of class movements. What are social movements if they are not class movements for, for Marx? Okay. Because, because he was trying to uh, have a grand narrative, grand intellectual trajectory, political trajectory. Okay. That, that, that social movements must be goal oriented. That is why I have mentioned social movements are instrumental if you can slightly recall uh, uh, in, uh, in the, in, the uh, uh, in the previous lectures what we have discussed that instrumental rationality is all about goal oriented social action whereas substantive rationality uh, 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 looks at emphasizes on only on methods uh, only on means but instrumental rationality always aims towards goals objectives uh, means uh, sorry ends and so on means are more highlighted in substantive rationality whereas ends are highlighted in instrumental rationality. Okay. That is why social movements indeed are class movements for Marx which are instrumental both in forming the major events within particular uh, social forms. Then not only form the major events within particular social forms but also social movements attempt to transform one social form to another. Okay? That is why uh, uh, slavery was replaced by feudalism, feudalism was replaced by capitalism and so on. And for Marx, Marx the way he envisioned capitalism will, will, will certainly be uh, um, uh, replaced by some other phase, maybe socialism or communism or let me put it this way, the post capitalist phase. Okay. So, it is, it is reasonable to say that uh, Marx's holism is based on the argument that the, the history of humanity is, is a history of social labor and that, that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that Marx's holism is based on this argument that the history of humanity is a history of social labor. What does it imply? I mean this in effect turns humanity into a self creating subject. That is why uh, what I uh, said at the very beginning that, that, that in social movements we not only examine the aspect of self knowing, but also self creating. That, that we tend to transform one social form to another. Okay? Okay? However, if, if I say Marx's holism is based on the argument that the history of humanity is a history of social labor, uh, this in effect turns humanity uh, into a self-creating subject. Okay? However, 
the development of this this social labor leads to the formation of social subjects at the more immediate level of class movements creating transforming or defending a particular organization of social labor then uh, then if 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 social movements look at uh, uh, if if social movements uh, uh, look at uh, self creating subjects okay uh, or social movements emphasize on self creating subjects uh, uh, or or examine humanity uh, in terms of self creating subject uh, then then um, it is important to look at self knowing subject when we will be dealing with reflexivity and rationality okay okay uh, we we will discuss reflexivity and rationality a little while later but but what we have discussed till now let us see let us first see how we we have till now mapped out the contours of marx's uh, views on modernity through the lenses of holism or totality on the one hand and social movements on the other okay if you if you look at this uh, we started with this uh, uh, that marx's view on modernity is deeply shaped by own in, by his own involvement in the europe of his day he was a philosophy graduate uh, in 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 the capitalist sense in a capitalist sense uh, in the sense of a capitalist mode of production he remained unemployed he was unemployed throughout his life uh, he was a political activist but we do not uh, 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 a student of sociology uh, uh, doesn't look at employment that way uh, uh, he was a political activist involved with radical and socialist organizations in britain and france as well as in the first socialist international and most importantly though was his intense intellectual involvement with his own society the collected works of marx and engels can uh, 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 run to uh, uh, over 40 volumes on social philosophy economic analysis and political comment which taken together represent a phenomenal amount of empirical research as we have already discussed marx's idea of modernity was shaped by three developments uh, three intellectual uh, uh, and political trajectories namely german philosophy british economy and french politics when i say german philosophy i refer to the collapse of the the official church's intellectual credibility when i say british economy i refer to the industrial and agricultural revolutions in britain and when I refer to French politics, I, I, I mean the French revolutions of 1789 and 1848 and the French theorists of revolution. Okay? And when, when as, a, as a member of the Young Hegelian club, he, he Marx uh, banged on the works of Hegel and Feuerbach to uh, outline uh, the principles of dialectic and the uh, and the materialist conception of history marx's marx's empirical stand, starting point for thinking about the new society new mode of production um, uh, is largely a projection of each of these developments in the future i mean the way german philosophy developed uh, the, the uh, made a transition uh, the way british economy developed I mean, it made a, it also made a transition, and the way French politics also made a transition. I mean, the way it emerged and developed. Then we have discussed uh, Marx's contributions to the debates on modernity uh, in through the lenses of holism or totality and social movements. Uh, yeah, of, I mean, to start, I mean, what we have discussed in holism or totality uh, that for Marx, modern society. Uh, uh, is above all capitalist society modernity or capitalist mode of production is often uh, contrasted with uh, with the earlier societies which are described 
as feudal slavery uh, 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 and uh, feudal society and slave society as well as even earlier stages which uh, uh, one can discuss uh, and the way uh, modern society uh, for Marx uh, uh, is capitalist society is interesting I mean uh, because for Marx uh, capitalism must be uh, examined in contradistinction with slavery as well as feudalism in this sense and the, and and more so in the sense of enlightenment in the sense of um, industrial revolution uh, Marx treated capitalist society as a modern society okay that's why all slavery feudalism I mean even before that I mean uh, hunting and gathering economy they all are treated as pre-capitalist social formations or pre-modern social formations. Marx described his social theory as the materialist conception of history and this materialist conception of history has two primary starting points. One is based on the assumption, the first is based on the assumption that humanity is primarily social, that its species being is one based on around interaction rather than uh, around isolated individuals. What does it refer to? It refers to the fact that human beings are always found in social contexts. They are not isolated categories, they are not, we are not isolated individuals. We are always found in certain social contexts. Their characteristic activities, what sets them apart from other species are all social ones. And the second primary stating point so far as Marx's materialist conception of history is concerned that is the defining characteristic of humanity that is productive labor. What is that productive labor? I mean the transformation of nature into material to meet human needs when, when that transformation of nat nature to, uh, into material to meet human needs occurs I mean I mean it, it requires productive labor and this productive labor involves both mental as well as physical components unlike insects human uh, I mean uh, that is why uh, Marx gave this example I mean unlike insects human beings plan their labor. Insects always behave through their instincts. Equally importantly this labor is a social activity in that it is usually carried out with forces of production and relations of production which represent interaction not isolation only interaction not isolation that is why Marx uh, um, uh, gave such example that labor, labor is in the first place a process in which both human beings and nature participate and in which human beings of their own accord start regulate and control the material reactions uh, to between themselves and nature they oppose themselves to nature as one of their uh, as of as one of her own forces setting in motion arms and legs head and hands the natural forces of their body in order to appropriate nature's productions in a form adapted to their own wants by thus acting on the external world and changing it human beings at the same time change their own nature they develop their uh, the, the, their slumbering powers and compel them to act in obedience to their sway. We are not now dealing with those primitive instinctive forms of labor that remind us of, of, of the mere animal. Okay. We, have, we have discussed this, then, then, the way he, uh, then the way Marx provided this example that a spider con uh, conducts operations uh, that resemble those of a weaver and a bee puts to say many an architect in the construction of her cells, but what distinguishes the worst architect from the best of bees is this that the architect raises his structure um, or her structure in imagination before she or he erects it in reality. Okay. Then, then, then within in, in the, in the through, through holism or totality uh, in the lens of holism or totality what we have discussed I mean the way modes of production which dominate all others okay, mm. in any given society. Okay, mm. Mm. Marx uh, 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 saw emerging 
and an industrial technology dependent on large scale investment which was uh, driving out uh, artisanal production more generally relations of production based on small scale production for one's own use of relations of serfdom slavery of an aristocratic uh, lifestyle based on conspicuous consumption mm, were being replaced by a polarization i mean the polarization between the haves and the have nots the polarization between the 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 exploiters and the exploited the polarization between the bourgeois and the proletariat okay and the way proletariat have been removed from from uh, the pages of history uh, uh, must be examined at length and in detail okay and when they are removed from the pages of history when their concerns are unheard of when they are exploited to the greatest possible extent this is this is a time to to create a new society to create a new social order okay uh, uh, and such situation calls for our deliberations on social movements and marx identifies the opposition between those who depend on selling their labor power i mean the working class and those who own the means of production that is the capitalist class for marx because the history of the human species is the history of its social labor the development of new modes of production is itself a human history more than that it is the history of a class that's why uh, in the manifesto of the communist party uh, of 1848 marx wrote the history of all other to existing society is the history of class struggles i mean the development of the capitalist mode of production not only generates a new class of capitalists it is at the same time a result of their creative activity and this new class shapes society in its own image at the same time uh, as it is itself shaped by the mode of production it is developing this is not simply economic marx treats the 1688 coup in britain and the 1789 french revolution as moves towards the state of the new social order and analyzes much of the intellectual culture of his day as a further contribution to this kind of society okay and 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 the kind of and this the the society that marx envisages has traversed through different stages namely hunting and gathering economy uh, slavery feudalism capitalism which will unavoidably and unstoppably move on to socialism and thereafter communism there is a difference but we have discussed how there is a difference between socialism and communism in socialism each will be contributing uh, according to uh, his or her uh, uh capacity and will be paid according to his or her work whereas in communism each will be contributing according to his or her capacity and will be paid according to his or her needs okay such 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 new social order requires a transition from class in itself to class for itself the situation of exploitation into which the capitalist mode of production places the working class is not the end of the story working class people will become aware of this exploitation they will organize together and they will oppose it but the, but this, this transition from being i mean this such awareness organization and opposition being local and spontaneous has to make a transition to 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 uh, to Uh, such awareness organization and opposition being more organized more powerful and more radical then then comes the stage of class for itself uh, which involves a class consciousness intellectual and political consciousness which is ultimately directed towards uh, the transformation of society in this sense social movements then in the form of class movements are instrumental both in forming the major events within particular social forms and in transforming one social form into another marx's holism if you if you look at okay marx's holism is is based on the argument that the history of humanity is is a history of social labor this in effect turns humanity into a self creating subject okay now when we before before moving on to uh reflexivity and rationality now first uh, let us see 
as, as a precursor to uh, I mean uh, reflexivity and rationality. I mean when I said self creating subject as a part of social movements and, and of course, in reflexivity and rationality we will see self knowing subject. Okay. But what I want to do this I mean I mean here that one must understand the, the, the contradicting views about uh, materialism and identity. According to Engels, your friend, philosopher, uh, collaborator, comrade in arms of Marx, according to Engels, uh, who dwelt upon the debates on materialism versus idealism, okay, this view okay, okay, uh, uh, from uh, he borrowed the, these these uh, these views from uh, the works of Leibniz, Fichte, and particularly far back. The opposition between materialism and idealism is the central question on which philosophy has always turned. In 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 the uh, in his opinion, uh, debate concerning the uh, the creation of the world i mean the the i mean the idealists are those who maintained that spirit whether a divine creator or the hegelian idea okay the philosophy of ideas uh, existed prior to nature whereas the materialists held the opposite uh, berkeley uh, subjectivism according to which uh, being i mean existence consists in being perceived false of course, on the idealistic side of the division. Okay? I mean idealism suggests that ideas are prior to the formation of matter, whereas materialists suggested that no matter is prior to the formation of ideas. Although the history of philosophy is filled with the debate between these two views, they do not occur in identical terms. Uh, at all periods. There have been times um, when, when civilization knew nothing about materialism in the strict sense of the term. Yet, even in the basic controversies of that time, we can detect something akin to materialism in the nominalist view concerning universals, which reveals a certain interest in physical nature and in concreteness. There have also been many doctrines in the history of philosophy which tried to find a compromise or middle way between the two views irreconcilable as they are. It is, it is difficult therefore, to distinguish the two main currents uh, expressing, the diver, uh, expressing the adverse opinions in all their purity and between them comprising the whole history of thought. Nevertheless, we always find two conflicting tendencies of which one is closer to the materialist viewpoint. Uh, or, or contains more of the elements which usually accompany materialism in its pure form. The fact that idealist or spiritualist tendencies are more frequently met with in philosophy is due, Engels tells us, to the division between physical and intellectual labor, the resulting autonomy of mental pursuits, the existence of a class of professional ideologists who in the nature of things tend to ascribe the primacy. Okay. How is the materialistic view to be more closely defined. Okay. Engels maintains that the essential opposition in philosophy is between nature and spirit. I mean nature as, as propagated by materialists and spirit as propagated by the idealists. It would uh, seem that both the opposing views express a kind of dualism. So, that uh, although the materialists regard mind as generally secondary to nature, they must they also regard it as something separate and different. Engels uh, holds that the opposition between nature and spirit is not that of two different substances in a particular genetic relation. I mean consciousness is not a thing in itself, Consus, cons, consciousness also is not an isolated category that is what we have discussed right. Okay. But consciousness is an attribute of material objects human bodies uh, organized in, in a certain way okay, 
or a process which takes place in them. I mean, Engels also appears to take up purely uh, the way he wrote in the dialectics of nature, if you look at history of science, uh, that the materialist outlook on nature means nothing more than the simple conception of, of nature just as it is without alien addition. And again, matter as such is a pure creation of thought and an abstraction. We leave out of uh, account of, uh, we leave out of account the qualitative differences of things when we lump them together as corporeally, uh, corporeally uh, uh, existing things under the concept matter. Okay? I mean, what, what we, can, we can look at the way, the way both Marx and Engels tried to examine social movements, I mean, they also contributed to, to or, or political movements, they also contributed immensely to the debates on modernity or critical modernist paradigm in sociology. Okay? I mean, the, his, uh, their, their reflections on, their, their reflections on class, their reflections on class struggle and all the more their reflections on how to create a new social order which will be classless, which will not have any hierarchy, which will not have exploitation, which will uh, not create division within society on the basis of uh, class and other social, political, economic variables. Okay? Perhaps, perhaps for this reason, Okay. The way, the way both Marx and Engels uh, uh, try to look at social transformation, political transformation, economic transformation, I mean transformation at the material real and, and those contributions must be, must be understood against the backdrop of uh, a modern social order, new social order. In this sense, when, when in thesis on far, far back Marx wrote, the philosophers have only interpreted the world in various ways. The point, however, is to change it. Okay? I mean, he was not uh, looking at radical philosophers of the time, rather, rather he was looking at uh, philosophers, uh, I mean, hitherto existing philosophers, uh, which have been dwelling upon theology, metaphysics, uh, uh, and perhaps, perhaps uh, that, that they, they they were purely, which were purely speculative in nature. Okay? Perhaps for this reason, Engels regards philosophy as, as either a purely speculative description of the world or an attempt to perceive general connections between phenomena over and above those established by natural sciences. For, for, for Engels, perhaps for this reason, philosophy in this sense is to disappear, leaving behind it nothing but a method of ratiocination uh, which has this much in common with former philosophy that it was traditionally considered part of it though not the most essential. I mean Engels, Engels speaks of dialectic as meaning simply the laws of thought. He elsewhere uses the term to denote a comprehensive and legitimate system of knowledge of the most general laws of nature of which our thought processes are a particular exemplification. In this sense, uh, he is a good deal uh, less, uh, I, mean, I, mean, I mean in this sense uh, philosophy it would seem is the science of the most general laws of nature, its conclusions derive logically uh, from data furnished by the positive sciences, though they may not have been formulated by any of these of those sciences. Okay? This, is, this is also very important. Okay? When, when we look at uh, uh, social movements, political movements, we must look at them as, as transformatory in nature. Okay? If they cannot transfer uh, 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 the, the hitherto existing social orders, then perhaps there is no meaning of meaning of these social movements or political movements. Okay? They must be able to transform the society, they must aim towards a better, just, equitable, egalitarian society, social order. Then in this, in, in this in, I mean in the fifth lecture, what we have discussed till now, we have tried to examine the quintessence of Marx's views on modernity okay, through the lenses of uh, 
holism or totality on the one hand and social movements on the other. When suppose when 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 uh, I mean uh, uh, Engels uses the term matter to denote either the totality of physical beings or what is left of things when they are stripped of qualitative differentiation. The real unity of the world consists in its materiality in anti during he wrote. Okay. That is to say all that is uh, is the physical world perceptible by the senses there is no visible nature or behind the scenes the behind the scenes world uh, different in kind of a uh, kind from that observed by the scientist. Okay. If you if you if you look at uh, such such uh, uh, interpretation that that we are trying to uh, bring about bring forth uh, into discussion uh, why materialism is is a modern phenomenon or why materialistic world view perspective is a modern phenomenon in the context of social movements because it provides us with adequate scope to to make such transition in the stages of society one how to make a transition in the stages of the society from uh, hunting and gathering economy to uh, slavery to feudalism to capitalism and then to socialism and thereafter communism you know, through a transition from class in itself to class for itself. You see in, in, in 2017 if I have to say that uh, if somebody uh, suggests that no uh, what, what did Marx say Marx said uh, capitalist society above all is uh, I mean modern society, modern society what is a modern society? No modern society is it is above all a capitalist society. Why did he say so? Why did not he say that no capitalism is not a capitalist society is not a modern society? Perhaps he was trying to equate or evaluate capitalist society on the basis of the pre-capitalist social formations. Okay? He was not trying to equate capitalism with, with, with socialism or communism. He was trying to equate capitalism in terms of pre-capitalist, pre-modern social structures, social formations. When, when he was dwelling upon pre-capitalist social formations, for him as I have already mentioned, for him uh, three important uh, intellectual and political trajectories came to his mind. One was German philosophy, secondly British economy and thirdly French politics. Okay? I mean if you if you can understand this okay, then, then I think we will we'll, we'll slowly move on to our, uh, our deliberations on reflexivity and rationality in the next lecture. Okay? Then please remember that that we are we are still discussing uh, Marx's views on modernity. I mean, within classic statements about uh, sociological modernism through the works of Marx and Weber. And in the next lecture, uh, I mean, I mean, in this lecture we have discussed uh, Marx's views on modernity through the lenses of uh, holism or totality and 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 uh, social movements and. In the if if social movements are reflected in in terms of uh, um, I mean uh, uh, self-creating subject, then then uh, self-knowing subject will be represented by uh, two other uh, central pillars of critical modernist paradigm in sociology, namely reflexivity and rationality. We are going to discuss reflexivity and rationality uh, in the next lecture. Okay? Thank you.